is welcome. So we're going to talk about this parable in Ezekiel 19 um, today in the live. But I'm just going to go over it really quick for anybody who cannot watch it, watch the live. Um, so we're going to talk about Ezekiel uh, 19, 1 through 9. What does this parable mean? I myself, you know, I'm not familiar with the old scriptures or the history. So I've been seeking and and finding and a lot of of what these parables are saying history repeats itself and I believe that we're in this path of okay so the, let me just get straight to it okay so Ezekiel Ezekiel 19 1 through 9 I'm gonna read this parable and then what is it saying we're gonna look into the what the commentary says uh, to understand it better so take up a lament concerning the princes of Israel and say, What a lioness was your mother among the lions. She lay down among them and um, reared her cubs. And she bought up uh, one of her cubs and he became a strong lion. And he learned to tear the prey and he became a man eater. And the nations heard about him and he was trapped in their pit. Um, they led him with hooks to uh, the land of Egypt, and when she saw her hope unfulfilled, her expectations gone, she took an another of her cubs and made him a strong lion, and he prowled among the lions, uh, for he was now a strong lion, and he learned to tear the prey, and he became a, a man-eater, and he broke down the strongholds and uh, devastation uh, devastated their towns. And the land and all who were in it uh, were terrified by his roaring. And when the nations came against him, those from regions round about, they spread their net for him, and he was trapped in their pit with hooks. They pulled him into a cage and brought him into the king of Babylon. And they put him in prison, so his roar was heard no longer on the mountains of Israel. So... Let's go back. So what is this explaining? Um, well, I'm going to get more into it, but we're going to read what the commentary says. I'm going to get more into it in my live. Um, so if you want to come on, I'll be on the round, God willing, um, um, like close to 11. I'm usually on there for an hour. So anyways, this commentary, they say, Ezekiel is to compare the kingdom to Judah at, uh, to a lioness and he must compare the kings of Judah to a lion's whelp they they are cruel and um, oppressive to their own subjects and the righteousness of God is to be acknowledged is to be acknowledged uh, when those who have uh, so when those who have terrified and enslaved others are they are themselves also terrified and enslaved. So when professor uh, professors of re, re, uh, religion from um, Kanan accents uh, with ungodly persons, uh, their children usually grow up following after the maxims. Um, and fashions of a wicked world. Advancement to authority discovers the ambition and selfishness of man's hearts, and uh, those who spend their lives in mischief generally end up uh, them by violence. So, this okay. So these were three kings in this parable. It's, they think it's these these three last kings of Israel before. Um, their downfall and they got you know whoever was left was exiled to Babylon now this is a sign of knowing of a fall uh, a nation that is about to fall and I can see it crystal clear that we're on that edge that we are about to fall or we have already fallen we have already fallen you already see certain things that are happening in this world to show that we're already falling. So next, the commentary says in Ezekiel 19, 10 through 14, 
which we'll read really quick. So your mother was like a vine in your vineyard planted by the water. It was fruitful and full of branches uh, because of abundant water. Its branches were strong. It's fit for a ruler scepter. It towered high above the thick foliage, uh, conspicuous for its height and for its many branches. And it was uprooted. Um, I believe this is talking about political Israel. And then it was uprooted in fury and thrown to the ground. The east wind made it shrivel. It was stripped of its fruit. I mean, we were just talking about the fruit, the vineyard in Isaiah chapter 5 and also in Matthew chapter 21 uh, yesterday. And also John chapter 15. And then we were talking about the fruits of the Spirit as well. The Holy Spirit is talking to us, trying to warn us through His Word. This is what's about to happen. And what we need to do is be thoroughly equipped with God's Word to be prepared. Because this was what is about to happen already happened. There's nothing new under the sun. And I, I feel the trumpets are being blown. We need to get ready. We need to get ready. So what happens to this? The, it was uprooted in its fury and thrown to the ground. And the east wind made it shrivel. It was stripped of its fruit. It, its strong branches withered and fire consumed them. And now, and now it was planted in a desert. We are about to enter a desert uh, season in, um, in a dry and thirsty land. And the fire spread from one of its main branches and consumed its fruit. Uh, no strong branch is left on it, fit, um, fit for a ruler scepter. This is a lament, and it is to be used as a lament. Okay, so now what is the commentary saying? Jerusalem was the vine. Okay, Jesus Christ, and he says he is the vine. Um, they were being led once by God. And, and and reliant on God, flourishing and fruitful. The vine is now destroyed. Uh, though not plucked up by the roots, she has, by wickedness, made herself tender to the, the uh, sparks of God's wrath, so that her own branches serve as fuel to burn her. Blessed be God, one branch of the vine um, here alluded to, is not only become a stronger rod for the scepter of those that rule, but is himself the true and living vine. Jesus says, I am the true vine. I am I'm the only way. There shall be for a rejoicing to all the chosen people of God throughout generations. Now, before I close this up, there is much more to look at here and to see the, the times that we're living in. Just going back to what this commentary says, which I agree with. These people, okay, before the downfall, they had these three kings, and these kings were living wickedly. We'll get more into that in the live. Uh, they were living wickedly, and this is what happens, and they themselves are deceived. And we see, see this in Timothy chapter 3, which we'll go into really quick. Uh, Timothy uh, chapter 3. I think it's Second Timothy, right? Chapter three. Wow, the Lord is really thoroughly, thoroughly equipping me with scriptures because I had a hard time remembering where scriptures were, <laughs> and now I remember. So, here we are in Second uh, Timothy chapter three. But mark this: there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes to gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sin, who are loaded down with sin, and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. That's the truth with what's going on right now. 
always learning but never able to come to the full knowledge of truth. Just as Janus and Jamaris opposed Moses, so also...